Leaf-cutting bees are solitary insects that don't sting. Although they work alone, they're happy to nest alongside other leaf-cutting bees. This aspect of their behaviour helps those trying to build up the New Zealand population of this very useful, very efficient pollinator. Ronald Van Tour has been working with the bees since 1988. He says lucerne seed producers in particular have benefited from the insect's presence, and more producers could, but there are some hurdles to overcome before their potential is fully realised. The issue has been for me to discover the easy ways of propagating these leaf-cutting bees. It has been a very big challenge. And the problem has been that whenever we put the bees out for contract pollination, the farmer uh, has certain requirements for getting a good seed yield. That often conflicts with what the beekeeper needs to do to get a good return of leaf-cutting bees back so that he can then uh, do a good pollination service the following year. The main problem is the use of insecticides. The other issue is the one of irrigation. So what we need to do is to be able to manage the irrigation so that, that the irrigator is not used on sunny days. And in that case, we need to advise that the irrigation is just done at night or away from where the bees would be foraging in that part of the field. The other one is bare soil, where the bees like to just rest and sit on the soil uh, and sunbathe. And then if a vehicle drives over the bare soil, it kills the bees. So that's another management issue. However, the returns that you can get from leaf cutting bees, I think, outweigh the risks and the management issues. In the 1970s, before we had leaf cutting bees in New Zealand, Farmers were only expecting about 70 kilograms of seed per hectare. And then when Barry Donovan introduced the leaf cutting bees into New Zealand in the 1980s, the amount of yield increased from 70 kgs to about 560 kilograms per hectare. What we have here is a shelter and in the shelter we have eight hives and each hive has a capacity to hold two kilograms of bees. Each hive has holes in it made up of boards. Each season we remove all the cells that have come into the shelter and into the hives and then we put these cells into cold storage for the winter and then about three weeks before the grower wants us to do the pollination, then we would put these cells from the cooler into an incubator at 28 degrees and 70% humidity and incubate those cells for three weeks. At that time, we can remove the cells in a release tray and put them into the shelter. And then the shelter with all the bees is then set up ready for pollination for the grower. So this shelter is part of the whole leaf cutting bee pollination service. And the leaf cutting bee cells are placed in this release cage initially. The adult leaf cutting bees then emerge from the cells. They go out and pollinate the various crop that the shelter is in. The females will come back provisioned with leaf material to build the nest in these holes here in each of these hives. And you can see here a green material where there are about three to five leaf discs that the adult has produced to cap that set of cells in the hole. And she'll just keep on repeating that process until she dies after about two and a half months from emerging from this release tray. These uh, hives are important because otherwise, instead of nesting in these beehives, the females will nest in holes in trees and we'll never be able to get them back again. The reason why the leaf-cutting bees are better at performing their pollination role than honeybees is because they're not concerned about being struck by the anther as that stamen is tripped. With honeybees, they get annoyed by this constant flicking action 
uh, and they learn how to get the nectar without tripping the flower. And as a consequence, um, they all draw holes in the side without actually doing any pollination. Leaf cutting bees are ideally suited for greenhouse and shade house conditions. Unlike honeybees that tend to gravitate to the outside of the chamber and uh, try and find escape routes. Recently, a study was done to show that in the propagation of carrots under shade house conditions, uh, 150 leaf cutting bees did the same pollination work as 3,000 honeybees. I've also used them here in Canterbury in the shade house to propagate brassica crops. And the producer was very impressed by the seed yields that he obtained from that. The business opportunities at the moment are still a bit latent because we still need a large number of bees for other people to come into the industry. We don't have enough bees yet. At the moment, um, there's Ian Morton and Ray Butler and myself have the major amounts of leaf cutting bees in the country. Uh, and until we can find ways of increasing those numbers, um, then the business will stay at that size. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.